Bosses are an important staple of the Borderlands franchise, as well as most other games. They give you a nice challenge, and in the case of Borderlands, give you something to farm for XP or gear. These bosses are usually considerably more difficult than your usual enemy, with more damage and health. However, certain bosses are significantly harder for seemingly no reason. Whether it's huge health bars or crazy shield regeneration, Wonderlands has its fair share of unfair bosses. Hey everyone, I'm Consul Canadian, and this is the 5 worst bosses in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Before we get into the video though, I want to know what your least favorite boss in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is. Let me know in the comments down below, and make sure to like and subscribe if you like the video. First up on the list is the Dragon Lord himself. The Dragon Lord fight is an absolute mess of visual pollution, as well as just having a crapload of irritating mechanics that just aim to drive players up a wall. The Dragon Lord will constantly summon skeletons and wyvern newts during the fight, which, while they can serve as easy death saves, they also tend to get in the way far too much. On top of this, the Dragon Lord has three separate phases and will occasionally send four waves of spectral tramplers at the player which the first couple of times can very easily knock you off the map before you even know what happened. The Dragon Lord's phases by themselves are irritating too. He'll switch from normal tanky boss, to shield regen monster, to immunity phase bullcrap. The only reason that Dragon Lord wasn't further along the list is because he's the final boss of the game, so I think it's fair that he's quite a pain to beat, but that doesn't make it any less annoying. Next up on the list is Vorkanar. Vorkanar isn't a boss that I see a lot of people talking about in terms of being bad or annoying, but I personally hate this boss. The fact that Vorkanar can only be damaged in a certain part of their body is super irritating to me. On top of that, their sweeping attack is pretty much guaranteed to down any floorbound companions you have, and the constant wyvern enemies they spawn throughout the arena are a huge pain. Honestly though, Vorknar isn't too bad, they're just really annoying and just feel like they have a lot of unnecessary mechanics. Alright, now time for the really irritating ones, starting with Drill, whose chains are the sea. This boss fight is a giant load of BS. Pretty much every aspect of this boss is horrible. For starters, Drill has an insane amount of health that you can't break through just once, no. You'll have to kill Drill three times before they actually die, and two of those times they're protected by a shield. It's not just a massive health bar that makes this boss fight suck though, no, we've had tanky bosses before, but Drill's attacks are so completely ridiculous. Drill's arena is absolutely tiny, and they'll constantly litter it with status effects which cover 75% of the arena. Drill's attacks also have elite level tracking, which coupled with the tiny arena size make for an insanely painful boss fight. To make matters worse, Drill will also periodically regenerate his shield by like 20% at once, which really sucks for someone who's already struggling to break said shield in the first place. And that's not even to mention the constant groups of coiled that will spawn in the arena to constantly block you while you're attempting to dodge Drill's attacks. This boss fight honestly isn't too bad the first time around as long as your gear is good, but god help you if you have to fight Drill during a Chaos Trial. Alright, in second place is Nightmare. Nightmare is just an absolute offensive beast. Nightmare's health is pretty low for a boss, but what they lack in defense, they more than make up for in offense. So many of the Nightmare's attacks feel insanely unbalanced. There's the spin move that will launch projectiles at you while Nightmare hurls themselves towards you, all while being immune to all damage. And even Nightmare's regular attacks during this fight hit hard and knock you around even harder. However, that's not even the worst of it. Upon depleting Nightmare's initial armor and bone bar, they will transform into a spectral form, and that's when it gets really ridiculous. Every attack that Nightmare has while in their spectral form sweeps the entire arena. The sword swing hits everything, the stampede attack hits everything, then there's this stupid move where the entire arena gets covered by an electrical blanket, for lack of a better term, that you need to crouch in the middle of the arena to avoid, but then you can't run to dodge all of the skeleton warriors and archers that are being summoned non-stop. That's another thing too, the skeleton archers that spawn during this fight seem to have crazy good aim, and they like to spawn on top of the arena where you can barely even see them let alone kill them. But even if you do manage to kill Nightmare, the fight doesn't stop there, since if Nightmare dies while on the top half of the arena, they'll drop all of their loot in one tightly packed pile, making sorting through it an absolute nightmare. 
Honestly, I think we all know who number one is going to be. It's a boss that's so overpowered that it halts chaos level progression dead in its tracks. It's, you guessed it, Zomboss. Nah, I'm just joking. Obviously, it's the Wastard slash son of a... I feel like I really don't need to say much about this fight, aside from why. Why did Gearbox think this was a good idea? For those of you who haven't had the displeasure of fighting this boss yet, first of all, lucky you. Secondly, the Son of a Witch has quite possibly the most broken shield regeneration I have ever seen in any game. The Son of a Witch has a Spectral Aegis that he likes to spawn during his initial shield and health phase that restores his shield ridiculously fast, similar to the Dragon Lord. However, unlike the Dragon Lord, Son of a Witch's Spectral Aegis is half the size of a Wyvern Newt and has the hitbox of a frickin' freeze tag. This Spectral Aegis is a ginormous pain, as so many times the Waster will finally be almost dead, and then out of nowhere his shield is back to full again. Don't worry though, the Son of Witch isn't just a giant shield with crazy regen powers, his attacks are outrageously powerful as well, usually downing me in 1-2 to two hits. What's even worse is that you are guaranteed to fight this boss, not only during the story, but also to get from Chaos 6 to 8, which honestly put me off getting past that level for quite a while. All in all, the Son of a Witch is completely unbalanced and needs some serious nerfing if Gearbox wants to redeem this boss at all, as especially on Chaos 35, he's basically untouchable without the most broken of builds.